So let's start thinking about lengths. So here's Anastasia, and uh, as usual we'll view her at rest. And suppose she has a stick, um, for whatever reason, and, uh, I mean, you don't need a reason to have a stick, she wants to have a stick. Um, and let's say that the length of this stick in special relativity units happens to be 4 nanoseconds. Um, which I guess I think is a little more than a meter. Um, but anyway, let's just say 4 nanoseconds so we have something concrete. And so let's think about what that stick would look like in Anna's frame, in the at-rest frame, on a space-time diagram. So, let's see. Let's say, okay, obviously this isn't a scale. <coughs> Um, let me just draw this. So this would be the world line of the right end of the stick, and then the world line of the left end would be right at um, x equals zero. So this is the space-time diagram for a stick, four nanoseconds long, that's just sitting still. And um, this region in between, we would call the world region for the stick. I'm not going to shade this in because I think it's going to make the um, make the graph a little bit too messy. All right, so far so good. But now, what would Beowulf think about this? And so Beowulf is going to be moving at a speed of two fifths to the right. So let's make a note of that. So we're going to have. So I'll put that up here. Beta is two-fifths. So let's draw a two-observer diagram. Um, so, all right, over two, up five. This will be, um, um, gosh, I just realized I, um, have mislabeled these axes. Sorry about that. All right, um, and then this is five two, sort of symmetric. This is a slope of beta. This is a slope of one over beta. This is Beowulf's time axis, and this is Beowulf's spatial axis. Okay, so remember we said that an object's length is the distance between two events, two measurement events that occur simultaneously, one on the left end and one on the right end of the object. So here in Anna's frame, we would have a, a measurement maybe here and here, that would be simultaneous. And then we would look at the delta x and we'd say, oh, that's four. And of course we could do that over here too, maybe at t equals four seconds. We could do a measurement simultaneous, according to Anna, and we would have an x of 0, an x of 4, and we would conclude that the stick has a length of 4. All right. So what is that going to look like for Beowulf? So let's think about the x-primed axis. One way of thinking of the x-primed axis is that's all the points in space-time that have a t-prime of 0. So all of these events along this blue axis they're simultaneous. And so the distance here, the blue distance between my two fingers, that's what Beowulf would say for the length of this rod. Is this going to be the same as 4? No, because um, remember how we calibrate these axes. We calibrate them with hyperbolas. So let's see. So here would be a hyperbola. Maybe here's another hyperbola. And so what this means is, is that these are the markings for the x prime axis for Beowulf. So um, this would be two, this would be four. And so we see, um, you know, I guess I could draw one more. That would be 3. So we see that for Beowulf, the length of the rod is less than 4. It's definitely less than 4. This is what it would be if it was 4. Instead, Beowulf thinks it's, you know, 
says it's somewhere in here, so it looks like this might be around um, 3.5. So I'm going to, let's see, just note that. Um, um, I guess I'll call that, call that delta x prime. It's about 3.5. And that's looking at things from the graph. And this would be the um, length um, according to Beowulf. So maybe I'll do a prime there. So the length of the rod is a delta x, the distance between two simultaneous measurements. These are two simultaneous measurements. And from the graph, it looks like it's about 3.5. So this gives us a qualitative picture of what's going on. We can see the rod, its length, and we can see for sure that the length in Beowulf's frame and the moving frame is going to be less, less than 4, than it is in the at-rest frame. Let's do a little bit of algebra to see um, exactly how much less. So um, remember in the previous unit we talked about how to calibrate these axes. And we decided that the calibration works like this. Um, so delta x prime, that would be a distance on the x prime axis, and we can relate it to a distance on the x axis as follows. In this particular case, what we know is a delta x of 4. In the at-rest frame, the distance from here to here is 4. So I'd want to know what is uh, the corresponding distance up here. That would be x prime. So in this case, I'm looking for x prime. So delta x prime, well, I divide both sides by gamma. Um, is 1 over gamma delta x. Okay, so let's um, let's um, put some numbers here. So gamma, gamma is related to beta. So let's see, so gamma is 1 over 1 minus um, 2 fifth, well I'll write beta first, beta squared square root And if you do this out in a calculator, you will get about 1.09. And that's an, we've done that calculation before um, a bunch. You can evaluate this in a calculator. So then let's go up here. Delta x prime is delta x. That's the length in the unprimed frame. That's going to be 4 nanoseconds. I'm going to divide that by 1.09. And, let's use a calculator for that. This is a number larger than 1, so I'm going to get a delta x prime of a little less than 1. I mean, a little less than 4. Right? It's going to make this number smaller. Let's see. 4 divided by 1.09 is 3.67. So what this shows is that in Beowulf's frame, the length of this is not 4 nanoseconds, but 3.67 nanoseconds. So in the moving frame, the length has contracted. Let me conclude by stating this result a little bit more generally and in some different notation. So the first thing I want to do is just to make a note about time. So in this little derivation, we assume that the measurements occurred at time t prime equals zero. Right? That's the key thing, is when you're measuring length, you're, you take two measurements, and they have to be done at the same time. Beowulf could have decided to make those measurements at some other time, maybe up here, and then the length of the um, purple stick would be the length of this dotted line in Beowulf's frame, but we can see right away that this length and that length are going to be the same. So the point being, um, we assume that t equals 
0 equals t prime when deriving this, but the result is nevertheless completely general. We'll get the same result no matter what time we used as long as the measurements are simultaneous, which they have to be for a length measurement. All right, so let's focus on this relationship, and let me do just a little bit of um, algebra on that to write this in a slightly different way. So we have x prime is 1 over gamma delta x. Sorry. Okay. So we have delta x prime is 1 over gamma delta x. And the way this is often written, so delta x prime is length, 1 over gamma, and this is LR for rest length. The, so this is length um, of object in a frame in which it is at rest. It is at rest. So LR is for rest length, and then L would be length in a moving frame. So this is the Lorentz contraction formula. L in a moving frame, 1 over gamma, L in the rest, uh, rest length, its length in a frame in which it's at rest. And lastly, let me just write this um, in, a, in one, one other way. So I'm just going to copy this down, but I'm going to plug in for gamma. Gamma is this, 1 over 1 minus beta squared square root. And so you can simplify this compound fraction. Um, 1 over 1 over blah is just blah. And so then you could write this as L equals 1 minus beta squared LR. So these are two formulas for Lorentz contraction. The amount by which the length of an object, um, or the length of an object in a moving frame. And if you've already got gamma calculated for a problem, might as well use this one. If you don't have gamma calculated, you can save yourself a tiny bit of um, punching on a calculator by using this form. So these are the formulas for Lorentz contraction, and following this video there's a quiz where you can practice using these formulas.